brand new rubber mallet, probably in its most beautiful form right now before we really get to using it. As I have found over the course of some of these projects, the more nervous I get, the just means I'm on the right path. We're getting this demo on the road. I've been watching Home Alone a lot lately for the holidays. I just discovered the craziest thing. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. We're doing this. We are demoing the fireplace. Now I'm a little bit nervous, but as I have found over the course of some of these projects, the more nervous I am, I know that means I'm just on the right path. <laughs> I'm excited uh, and Travis is baking cookies, so either way, I'm gonna have a sweet treat to celebrate that I did something today. Look at this, I searched and searched the garage and did so much organizing, you guys. I feel so proud of it. I am working so hard to kind of carve out this little workspace. I bought a second baker's rack, I organized so much more stuff, got so much more stuff off the floor, especially some of my art, some of my personal paintings that I've done. It was nice to just get them off the floor into a saver spot. I just love this little tool chest. This is actually a hand-me-down from Travis's parents and it's been fantastic to organize our little tool collection. And you can see I'm using the baker's racks with a lot of different plastic storage bins to organize things into categories. I'm gonna add labels to all the bins eventually and hoping it's gonna make things super easy to find here, just like I have made things in my classroom cabinets. And if you haven't seen the classroom makeover video, I'll leave a link down below. The one thing I can't seem to get a handle on yet is organizing all these throw pillows, blankets, and extra linens that are possibly out of season, things I'm just not using in the home right now. We have a tiny linen closet and there's so much extra and I just love linens, you guys. I'm considering buying this super interesting throw pillow storage tower. It's like this vertical thing. I saw it and thought it was really interesting, but I just don't know if it's worth the price. And looking through all these different reviews, my interest is definitely peaked. If you have an opinion on this, definitely let me know down in the comments and maybe I should order it and we can all see if it's worth the money. I've done so much work purging and organizing everything across our garage so many different times, and it feels like a space that seems to accumulate items, but I'm so happy to have it at this point now where it feels like most things are put away. In case you're wondering where I'm hiding the mantle, it's actually back here until we pull it out into the workspace. Horizontal surfaces are ready for projects and I'm getting a handle on organizing things into categories across the board. Anyways, but I found the remote and the paperwork for the fireplace insert and we're still unsure what we're planning to do with it. I still wanna have like a chimney person come out and inspect it and I need to go over all the home inspection paperwork that details the interior walls of the chimney, which might actually help us make a decision, but I think we need to pull it out because I found something interesting, you guys. Let's, um, let's take a look. Trying to kind of get the batteries going on the little remote. It's an electric insert. This was originally a wood burning fireplace and to my knowledge this had been installed. But once I started investigating, I realized it's definitely never been installed. We're getting this demo on the road. I got myself a brand new rubber mallet, probably in its most beautiful form right now before we really get to using it. We've got the crowbar, very exciting, the super bar. Yay, I think this will be my primary tool. Safety gloves, of course. I like this little cute little neutral leather pair. I'm trying to still break them in though because they're still a bit stiff. And I like it when it's like your granddad's, you know, favorite gloves and they're all like oil stained and super soft. So we'll get those there. And then chisels, <laughs> so hopefully we won't drill a hole into those gloves. I did grab a couple different kinds of chisel, and in case you're looking to get something similar, this is what I went with, and I'll let you know kind of which one ends up being the most successful. Both of these ones are Irwin, but tons of companies make these. I just found these using a little gift card that I had at a local big box chain store. This one is the eight inch cold chisel. And primarily the chisels are for breaking up the mortar between the tiles in the fireplace facade, so we can then get under the tiles to pull them out with this tool. This could also help break apart longer strips of the mortar. I'm hoping this isn't as wide, but the crowbar. I've been watching Home Alone a lot lately for the holidays, so I feel like I've got, you know, my tool ready. <laughs> All right, back to the insert. It was purchased and then just kind of slid in here, I think with the hopes of putting in a 
outlet inside the firebox to be able to plug it in. If we want to just sell this insert, I've got all the paperwork, everything brand new, never been installed. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to get started. Man, it's crazy to see just like the raw edge of the tile. Just It kind of just got kind of slapped up here and that was fixed with a Sharpie marker right there. All right. I think I'm gonna move this out of the way. We'll have to haul all the beautiful Christmas decor away so we can get into this project. Oh, but it was a beautiful mantle. In a couple days, we're driving over to see my family for the holidays, so I guess it's time to throw these little stockings in the suitcase. <laughs> Sadly, the insane ice storm you may have heard about on the news over the holidays prevented us from getting over to see my family on Christmas Day. Fortunately, I was able to drive over the following week and you guys, me and my mom went to some epic vintage shops. I got some incredible things. I can't wait to share it with you oh, next week. This mantle, this wooden mantle top, lovely, thick, chunky mantle, it's not even attached either. It was just sat up here and it has all the hardware and installation materials attached. Again, I think they just got maybe so far in this DIY and didn't take it all the way home. And I'm kind of happy that they didn't because now it's a little less for me to undo, less holes in the walls, less uninstalling work needing to be done on this insert. So thank you previous homeowner. Look at this. So it's just a big chunk. Ugh, comes right off. And then you can see the interior and the paperwork, even some of the packing materials is <laughs> still attached. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So now we're looking at brick, some wood studs, shims, but not sure exactly why. Oh, it wasn't level right there. Man, I'm very interested to see how hard this is going to take apart. Also want to just double check the measurements. Oh gosh, look, you can see where the original mantle was. It was right there. Oh, I wish I knew what it looked like. I'm gonna find those pictures one day. Oh, handles. Well, that's very nice. Ugh, they're kind of dirty. Ugh. So while I was down at the hardware store, I did consider buying a multi-use tool. And we have all Ryobi tools, not sponsored, not in any way. We bought all those ourselves. <laughs> I kind of want to keep it in the same family just because I don't want to deal with other like charging equipment, really, and batteries. Do you have a multi-use tool? And is it as awesome as I think it's gonna be? I think it's gonna be one of those tools that you just literally use for everything, especially when I have to cut some new holes in the door frames for the mortise lock sets. All right, safety goggles and check. Clean, comfortable. Ooh, they're kind of scratched. I have a better pair, but it's so cold in the garage and I am too lazy to look for the other better pair, so. Safety. just discovered the craziest thing. It's starting to feel like if I keep going, just chiseling along the top, 
that the whole front sheet will come off together, like all the tiles in one big sheet. I don't know if it's possible, but it sure is acting like it's possible. So I consulted with, you know, my handyman at large, Travis, and uh, we decided if I chisel along this side, the way that I already did along that side, the whole thing may come down. My biggest concern was what if it breaks? <laughs> so uh, he suggested putting down a big drop cloth, which duh, I should have done anyways. I'm not gonna clear the hearth right now. That's not my goal. It's definitely coming up. Who knows, maybe I'll we'll get crazy, never seen it. And then we might even have to take off some of the original brick to scale down to fit the new mantle. Get back to work. <laughs> He's on your toes. There is something so strangely zen about watching yourself do a tedious task in like fast forward. <laughs> it's really fun. But gosh, it actually came down so much easier than I ever could have anticipated. Having that giant sheet along the top front come down in one giant piece saved me so much work. Think about how many strikes it would have taken to remove each individual tile. And then once I got the sides cleared, the whole thing was done. Of course, there's more to do, but uh, we'll get back to that in a second. Wow, it looks completely different in here. It's just kind of strange how not having the big black box of tile completely changes the feeling in here. We bought the fireplace and I'm so excited to see what it's going to look like. This is the first part and that's the side. I'm getting the other two parts with first and it's loaded. Oh my gosh. It's kind of a little bit chipping and falling apart, but I know I can do the repairs and once we get it in place, oh, I can't wait. Ultimately, we're installing that salvaged mantle. It's so dreamy. It's a completely different style for this home and for this space, of course. From that like super, I don't know, 2010s contemporary to this salvaged old world feeling. And it's gonna be a lighter color. My next step is putting those three pieces of the salvage mantle together in the garage workspace. We're gonna to do some heavy duty cleaning, like with a little teeny toothbrush, I think. All the little grooves get all the just like gunk off of it, priming and painting. But before we do that, I wanna bring it in here, do some plaster repair on some of the damaged bits and make sure that little corner is like crazy strong sealed to the mantle. Everything's put back together. I think the biggest challenge is the continued sort of masonry work. <laughs> I'm no mason. I'm trying to figure that out because I have all this mortar to deal with. So that all has to get chiseled out and sanded down into a workable surface. I also need to figure out underneath this is the original brick. I need to measure it. The interior of the salvage mantle and make sure that this is at a size that will fit that salvaged piece. So as you can see, this is only episode one. Yeah, like most things in home renovations and in life, this is gonna take probably many episodes until it reaches completion, but I'm so excited to have you along. Yeah, we're learning together. Look at this, giant chunks of tile. These tiles that have been staring at me for so long, over a year, that I've been dreaming about getting rid of, are now going bye-bye. It might not exactly be an after yet, but I'm so excited to have started this project. 
I made something important today a mess. <laughs> I am in Spokane and we are at actually this vintage shop. It's like everyone hired the stylist from Anthropology to come beautify their spaces and it's gorgeous. And I've found so many things already. So I've been on the hunt for a long rectangular, possibly mid-century modern coffee table. They are so 70s and I'm in love. <laughs> 